for the last couple of weeks. You know, how advantageous is that for you as a, as a play caller where you could rush for a drop seven? And how does that help you? Yeah, I mean, anytime you can get pressure with four guys, um, it helps. You're adding a piece in the secondary. I think our coverage has been good too. I mean, you go back and you look at the ta tape from Sunday night, like, there's good coverage on those pressures as well, right? I think it goes hand in hand um, and always does, but I'm encouraged by what those guys are doing up front. They're working together, they're coordinated, they're executing, they're unselfish, um, and they're all finding some success. What's next? As you continue to build, Mike talked about the potential to, to, to maybe do more in the secondary, knowing that the clock was going off for, for the quarterback. Yeah, I think uh, what our guys can handle, who's out there. Um, what we are able to execute in the back end. I mean, we, we do some different things. We bring some get different guys and still bring in four guys at the same time and dropping somebody out. Um, I mean, some five-man pressures mixed in here and there. Um, just having some versatility where you're not solely just that. Um, but it does. It provides you flexibility in the back end when you got seven guys. When you bring five, man, it's man or it's some sort of fire zone. And that's kind of the extent of it. So when you got seven guys, there's a lot more looks you can give quarterbacks. In the offseason, you, you talked uh, about kind of embracing the opportunity to be, you know, full-time uh, kind of defensive coordinator, obviously kind of doing two different jobs at once. Uh, last year, I guess kind of nine weeks into the season, how do you feel like you've kind of settled in um, into your role now? Yeah, I think it's been going well. Um, I think we, we've got a great defensive staff. Um, they work hard. They help me out a ton um, across the board. I think our players are – kind of more comfortable with the situation, everything going on right now, um, where it stands nine weeks in. So, I mean, it's been good up to this point. How, um, how much can a game like Sunday do for Jeff confidence and maybe kind of change his whole attitude when he gets home that many times? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like, you see the technique and those things, like, it's visible. It's evidence on film showing them, like, dude, like, you're tough to handle. If you play with technique, like, it's going to be hard for anybody in this league to block you. It's just continuing to build that consistency with that technique, um, play it and play out. And again, we've talked about this before. He, he can go without technique and he survives and he finds ways, right? But I mean, it's a, it's a totally different level with him when the technique's there and it looks good. And I mean, you guys saw the, the bull rush um, on that sack the other day. You kind of touched on how he deals with uh, double teams earlier in the season. Wonder if you've seen in, in terms of technique, has he has he improved in that, in that regard? Yeah, I think he's improving things? his hand use, his pad level. I think all that stuff's uh, getting better. I mean, it's hard too because like right now we're kind of at the point in the season where we're not practicing a ton, right? Like we got a lot of walkthroughs, we get jog through reps. So I mean, you got to make sure you're maximizing those individual reps we do get um, to continue to improve the technique and fundamentals, but just the full speed reps aren't really there. So it takes a little bit more on those guys individually to be able to find ways to improve across the board, DBs to D line, their technique and fundamentals without actually being able to go out there and execute it full speed all the time. On the note of that, just not having as much practice at this time of the year, waiting for that bye week and the injuries sustained in the secondary. I mean, how impressed have you been with that? next man up kind of mentality that you guys preach just because there have been so many guys that have had to come in. No doubt. I think they've done a really good job uh, being engaged when they haven't been in there. That's one thing. So when guys are able to come back, it, we're locked and loaded and they're kind of getting right back into the swing of things and ready to go. I think the guys that have been back up to have had to step up have came in with a mindset they're going to take advantage of their opportunities and they've been ready to go. I think uh, Midge and Book have done a great job preparing that whole unit because like you said, it's been kind of rolling pieces throughout the year. Um, but a lot of the credit goes to the players. Like They're ready to go and they're taking advantage of the opportunities and we're not missing a beat when we're out there. I'm not really scared or hesitant to do a whole lot because of somebody potentially not knowing. Um, so that plays a big part in it. Whenever Fulton gets back in there, will he? Is it? It's sort of catching a moving train. Like, has the defense sort of advanced in a couple of weeks that he's been out, or should he be able to slide right back? Yeah, I think. It? I mean, he's. It's probably going to be a little rusty. He has to knock off in terms of just playing and everything else. I, he'll be fine in terms of mentally and what we're doing and executing and understanding what we're doing defensively. I think. I don't think there's going to be a big learning curve in in regard to scheme. Um, it's more or less just whenever whenever he's ready to go, just knocking the rust off, getting back to playing with those techniques and fundamentals and all those little things we talked about that he was improving on throughout training camp and throughout early in the season. You just hope hope that isn't all lost in the wayside just because he's been out a few weeks. A couple of the interceptions, like Byers' most recent ones, you know, kind of in-snap adjustments, 
being able to you know have that liberty, that that ability to, to you know play beyond the scheme, so to speak. You allow those guys that because is that just a better comfort level with them, or what? What is it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think certain guys you probably trust a little bit more, and they probably got a little bit more leeway, right? Um, guys that potentially aren't as locked in who might have some mental errors and do some different things that hurt you at times, like you're going to make sure they're doing exactly how it's coached. But guys that kind of understand the scheme, kind of have that 300 level understanding of the game, right? There's going to be chances there where they're going to take advantage of, right? To go make a play and be opportunistic um, for our defense. And at the same time, like if we get, if we get burnt, we're going to be on his butt in the meeting about it, right? But, I mean, I think there's a little bit of professional, professional initiative for those types of players um, to be able to go out and make some plays and not be robots out there. Is that a comfort level that may not have been there last year? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think last year there was a lot of, lot of stuff going on and a lot of moving pieces, and I think now we're – into the kind of rhythm a little bit right now with where we're at as a unit. Um, so I think that does play a part. So comfort probably is a good word for it. You know you're confident in the next man up deal and all of that, but have you come out of any of these games, particularly the secondary, and thought, man, that was even better than we could have reasonably expected? Yeah, I thought, I thought they played well, really, this whole stretch that we've had here. Um, I mean, we had a couple tough DPI calls against Indy, obviously. Um, but other than that, I, I think they've been pretty sound. I, th I think the underneath coverage has been really good too, Paul. I think those guys are locked in. You see some coordination in the coverages. Um, guys kind of understand their role as these routes develop, where we're expecting them to be. Um, the communication has been good, regardless of who's been in there. I mean, just like the secondary, we've had a lot of moving parts at inside backer too now, right? Between Jay on being out, between Rashawn being out. like um, So I think they're the schematic understanding of what we're trying to do conceptually and guys being able to come in and continue that communication throughout um, has been huge for us. You talked a couple weeks ago about the importance of coordination of the pass rush and the four guys being on the same page. What does it take practically to actually implement that for it to happen? Yeah, I think they got to understand the looks they're getting, right? I think they got to understand how teams are protecting us based on what look we're giving them, whether it's four down, five down, whatever it might be. Um, I think communication is a big part of it. Um, I mean, Jeff does a great job out there. Nico does a great job out there. Harold's a really smart dude, bud. Like, they all kind of have a good understanding of what we're trying to get accomplished week in and week out. Um, and ultimately, they go out and execute. Like, they rush. They can win one-on-ones, and they can win with games. Like, I mean, we kind of got a two-edged sword right now a little bit with that because they're doing a good job doing both of those things. Production so jump your shoulders to sort of communicate that understanding. Yeah, I think um, between myself and Coach Williams and Ryan Crow, like we're all kind of involved in how that thing's going to go. I mean, they do a T does a great job pulling clips, finding things that kind of teams have maybe struggle with at times, um, and we all kind of work together. Then between the unit meeting and between the position meetings, we get it kind of coordinated, and they're always walking through. That's the beauty of the D line. Like a lot of those guys aren't special teams, so you gain a lot of time, a lot of opportunities to meet and walk through and kind of get all that stuff coordinated um, during that time. So they with the extra meeting time. The production of, of Autry and, and Simmons really jump up the last three weeks. I um, wonder how much of that is due to each other uh, to, to how well. Yeah, I, I mean, I've said it all year. I think the addition of uh, Nico in there, getting a bigger body, a longer body, I think it's, it's helped him across the board. I think it's helped Harold tremendously. I think it's helped Jeff tremendously. I mean, you got you got four big dudes. You're, you're able to get pushed in the pocket with two. I mean, they work really well together. Um, they're around each other all the time. So I do, I think having both those guys in there has been a tremendous asset to us. How do they kind of, if there's maybe an example or two of how well they work together, you know, what, what yeah, strengths? I mean, you just, like, even Sunday, working some games, understanding. I, there's a lot of, it's more than just running here and somebody running around. There's a lot of details that go into those games execution in terms of being the picker, being the, being the looper, the steps, understanding the steps a guy might take based on skill set, um, understanding how to set guys up based on how long it's going to take. I mean, there's a lot of details. It's not just go out there and run, run this line, run that line. Like, 
and understanding who you're going with. Like a game with Jeff for Nico is going to be a lot different than a game with Harold based on skill set and based on how those guys are able to set things up or potentially even penetrate. What's your DC appreciate of his punter? And do you say something to Kern when he maybe – Yeah, man, I, that one the other night was huge. Um, really started the, the turn in that game, right? Um, I mean, he's been a great asset for us since I've been here. Um, and it, it only continues, only gets better. Um, it's great when you got a guy like that, when you know you're putting down to the end zone, that's probably going to end up inside the 10-yard line. Gives us opportunities to make some plays um, and set our offense up. It's complimentary football, but it's one of the best in the league. He's been the, one of the best in the league for a long time now, um, and it's a huge asset for us defensively. In the first six weeks, you guys, I think it was six explosives you gave, you gave up second like worst in the league. Since that time, you know, nothing has, has happened. What, what is behind that? Like, what has allowed you guys to kind of hunker down and not allow those explosive plays? Yeah, I think, uh, I think a little bit of how we're playing, how we're playing some of these teams is – Affected that. Um, I think the guys kind of understand the philosophy on some of these games. Like, if we don't give up the big one and we make them earn it, like, we can find ways to get off the field. Like, last Sunday is a perfect example. I think they had four drives that were over nine plays that resulted in nine points. Like, there was a nine, a nine, a 10, and a 12, and it resulted in nine points. So, like, I think they got confidence in our ability to get off, a, get off on the field on third down if we get to it, to get off, on the, get off the field in the red zone if we get to it. Um, so they're continuing to battle, and I think that leads back to, hey, if we just make them earn it, we'll find ways. If we give up the chunks, it's, it's going to get a lot harder for us because we're not going to have those opportunities to potentially get off the field.